Well, good morning. We're glad you're here. I hope you're tuning in. Hope you're ready to worship the Lord this morning. It's our second time to do a, uh, a service where we're just looking at empty pews, but I know that you're out there and I know that you're ready to worship the Lord. Let's sing, uh, This is Amazing Grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. So I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings Yes, this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place that you would bear my cross you would lay down your life that i would be set free oh jesus i sing for all that you've done for me worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. So I would be set free. Oh. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Whoa, oh, 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 and we can do that right here, even though you're there and I'm here, we can praise the Lord together. 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship your holy name. 
the sun comes up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes sing with me bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Oh, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, Lord, I worship your holy name, Lord, I worship your holy name. Welcome First Baptist Hebron. I'm so excited to be able to welcome you to our online service this morning. Uh, even though I so long to see each and every one of you and I miss you dearly, it makes my heart very happy to know that we are worshiping together in spirit and we are still being the church. We are still committed to gathering. We're still committed to singing God's praises, uh, learning from his word, hearing it being read out loud, uh, and we're still committed to the gospel. And that's uh, such a wonderful thing, and I think that's, that's what God has us do as Christians. He has us to commit to him and his church. So thank you for joining us. If you are a guest with us here this morning, maybe uh, you heard about our online services and you decided to log on with us, uh, I'm so happy that you're able to join us, and I pray that you would be able to reach out to us, or maybe even when we resume services here, you'd be able to join us and let us know that you you heard our online messages, and we would love to meet you and get to know you even better. Um, so this morning, our scripture reading is going to be found in Psalm 119. And we're going to start in verse 105. And I do pray that you would uh, open up your Bibles with us and read with us as we're reading. Uh, and even as Mark is up here singing songs, I hope that you are singing along with us. Because, you know, I think there's something very special uh, when on Sunday mornings, not only our congregation, but congregations across the world join in one voice, singing praises and reading scripture. 
So I hope that your Bibles are turned and that we can read together Psalm 119, starting in verse 105. So it begins like this. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I've promised it once and I'll promise it again. I will obey your righteous regulations. I have suffered much, O Lord. Restore my life again as you promised. Lord, accept my offering of praise and teach me your regulations. My life constantly hangs in the balance, but I will not stop obeying your instructions. The wicked have set their traps for me, but I will not turn from your commandments. Your laws are my treasure. They are my heart's delight. I am determined to keep your decrees to the very end. Now, before we pray together, I hope this past week that you've been following with our uh, seven days of prayer uh, for this uh, pandemic that we have going on. And even though we've, we've ended the list, I hope that we would continue to be in prayer for this because I, I said it last week and I'll say it again. The church should be marked by prayer. Uh, we have been burdened as priesthood of the believer to, to speak to God on behalf of others. So I pray that as we pray, we will, we will keep that in mind. So will you bow with me? Dear Father, thank you that you lend us your ear. You hear us. And even though we're fallen, we were once dead in our sins. Lord, you have reconciled us through your Son so that we can speak to you so that we can have the privilege of calling you Father, of having a relationship with you. And Lord, in this season, as we are remembering the life of Christ, a life that led to suffering on the cross and ultimately dying, I pray that you would help us to really take in the significance of what happened on the cross. And Lord, as we, we approach Easter, which is a time of celebration, a time of recognizing that not only did your son die, but he also rose again victorious over death, I pray that you would help us to, to hope in that, to not only read it as a story or to do it because it's just the season to celebrate it, but that we would truly celebrate the resurrection and that we would bring the truth, the hope of the resurrection to our world. Lord, this is a world that desperately needs you. And it always has, but times like these are reminders that we ought to be praying for our fellow humans. So we do pray for the sick. We pray for the vulnerable to getting sick, that you would protect them. We pray for our leaders. We pray for those who are at home, families and kids, people who now have online school and have to figure that out. Lord, we pray for churches all across, not only America, but the world, that we would still be committed to reading your scripture. We would still be committed to the gospel. We would be committed to one another that in spirit we would truly worship you together. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Pray that you would bless the rest of this service. And we pray all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. We just sing this little chorus with me? Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. You know, 
that remains a truth no matter what we're going through that he loves you and me another truth is that we can build our lives upon the foundation that is Jesus Christ he is our cornerstone my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm he is Lord Lord of all when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anchor holds within the veil My anchor holds within the veil Christ alone the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When He shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in Him be found. Dressed in His righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. I think this song will go along with Pastor Steve's message this morning. You hear me when I call, you are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield. Though troubles linger still, whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? 
I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hand. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who sings forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Thank you, Mark. That's a great reminder that the God, the Lord God Almighty, your Savior, Jesus Christ, is always by our side. <clears throat> well, um, I'm not getting used to this. This isn't any fun to come and look at Gerald and uh, Mark and Noah. And there you are. You're sitting at home with a great big sweet tea and a Cinnabon. I know you are. And uh, you're not uncomfortable at all, but this is just downright weird to stand here and preach to you knowing that it has to go over all the electronics to get to you, but we're thrilled that it does. I hope you're here with us. I hope you're staying connected. And I hope you're praying that we can be all back together soon. Can you imagine? I mean, and, and it might be a reality, but can you imagine not not doing Passion Week with one another and, and Easter, and, and uh, yet that may be our reality. We don't know yet, but gosh, I hope not, because it's just, uh, just a difficult time to be apart. And we're missing so many of you. Um, you know, it's been so long now. I'm, you know, it's, I'm, I'm missing what's his name that sits right over there. Who's her face? It sits over there. That couple, I... Never could remember their name over here, and you know, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I see faces as I look around, and uh, just pretend you're here, and it can't continue to do that. I'm going to talk about, because uh, we had finished Galatians, and I thought I need to find something that might be of some sort of help during this particular time we're in. Of course, they're all calling it a crisis, and certainly it is, a pandemic, and all the struggles that it brings, but one of the things that it brings is fear. And you know, fear makes cowards of us all. When, when we're afraid, things that aren't so good in our brain begin to happen, and, uh, and, and we struggle. But you know, I want to I wanna really kind of take a few minutes and, and describe to you uh, fear and its kind of twin brother, anxiety. Because all of us are becoming well acquainted with fear and anxiety. It's, uh, it's being forced upon us, and we're having to work really hard not to operate in fear. 
but to operate by faith and know that God's angels, armies is with us and that God is beside us and caring for us and all of that. But uh, let's make no mistake, this is a very frightening time. Not, uh, not been as frightened, really, uh, as a nation since uh, post-9-11 days, those days after that attack. And you'll remember kind of the fear that you felt, wondering what was next and what was going to become of us and how we were going to get through all that. And I'm certain those thoughts are coming to you now. So I wanted to talk a little bit about fear. I want to, I want to begin by giving you uh, definitions characteristics and causes of fear. And uh, I have June Hunt to thank for that. I want to give her all, all props. As a matter of fact, I want to tell you, uh, after I go through this, if you are feeling a lot of fear, if this is a part of your mix now and you're wondering how to get out of it, I would encourage you to go online, hopefortheheart.org, and order her little book on fear. Uh, you'll find it very good, filled with uh, scriptures that, that you can pour into your heart and learn so that you can repeat those instead of the fearful things that are going through your mind and find rest and peace. And, and I promise you this is a, a great little book that she's written on this subject. Fear is a very interesting emotion that we have. As a matter of fact, uh, it's one of the major emotions that creates anger, and we're seeing more and more anger because there's more and more fear. Uh, there are actually four things that create anger. Uh, one of them is frustration. Certainly we're feeling a lot of that. Uh, you know, if, if you're not feeling frustrated, just uh, make one of your little temporary outings be the grocery store. Uh, Don and I went to Costco's and I thought we were in a third world situation. As a matter of fact, I I, I met a, as I was going through and trying to find something, you know, they, they don't have what you want or what you need, so people were just buying anything. And I, I looked over and this uh, man had six dozen eggs. And I looked at him and I kind of snickered. And I said, uh, are you shopping for your family? And he said, yeah. And uh, he had six dozen eggs and he had eight big jugs of milk. And I said, milk and eggs, huh? And he, I said, is your family large? And he said, no, two children. And I said, hmm. I said, you know eggs don't freeze. And he got this sick look on his face. He said, they don't? I said, no. And I said, milk will, but you won't want to drink it after it thaws out. And so he says, thank you. <laughs> and he got right on the phone with his wife. And I think she verified the same thing. So it was just like crazy. And, but that creates frustration. Frustration, hurt, fear, and injustice. Those are the four things that make up anger. And so we're seeing more and more fear, more and more anxiety, and more and more anger in the people that are around us because not everybody knows the living Christ. Not everybody has a faith. Not everybody is uh, bound for heaven and understanding that. And so it's ours to be comforting and to be, to be delightful and to be the, the, the arms and the eyes and the voice of Christ in this, in this crisis to people and to show ourselves gentle and friendly and all that we need to be during this time. But let me first give you definitions again out of June Hunt's little book, it's marvelous, defining what is fear. Fear is a strong emotion, reaction to a perceived imminent danger, characterized by a flight, a fight, flight, or freeze response. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, they tell us happens scientifically is when you're shocked, the kind of fear that comes when you're surprised by something. You're either going to fight, you're going to stop and fight, or you're going to run away, or you're going to freeze. Those are going to be the physical responses to fear. Uh, I tell all the, uh, people all the time, you know, especially people that run, they think running is good for them. And, and I tell them that God doesn't intend for us to run anymore. Uh, he gave man the ability to take flight, to, to run away from something that was dangerous. So when ancient man would see a dinosaur, he would realize, time for me to run. 
Not time to fight, not time to freeze. Time to run. Well, God has taken those dinosaurs and put them in the ground and turned them into gas and oil. So I believe God intends for us never to have to run again. You need to go somewhere, get in your car, and go. So just a small little tidbit from me, and I know you're laughing at home. I pray you are, because there's nobody here laughing, uh, which makes this even more frustrating. All right, uh, second thing about fear. Fear can be real or imagined. It can be rational or in- irrational. It can be normal or abnormal. Fear acts as a protective reaction placed in us by our Creator to activate all of our real danger. Um, fear is a natural emotion designed by God. Fear, when, uh, when it is translated, uh, it is translated from the Hebrew word uh, yarwa. Is that right? Sounds right. Who's going to challenge me on it? You're not here, right? I'm sure at home you have the, the right pronunciation. Call me or something. Which means to be afraid or to stand in awe or fear. And of course, God calls us to fear him. So fear by definition has a lot of different definitions. Uh, Let's talk about what is anxiety. Anxiety is an umbrella word covering a variety of degrees of worry and fear raging from mild to extreme. I know many of you have felt some of that with what you see going on in your world. You start uh, thinking of things and you begin to worry at varying different degrees. You may not even be worried for yourself, but you become anxious in the process. Anxiety is an uneasiness or a distress over a threat or something unknown and is characterized by extreme worry and brooding fear. And, of course, that's what we have. Um, we, we know so little about this virus, and that is, makes us uneasy and distressed and poses a threat, and we don't understand it. Anxiety stems from uncertainty, hoping something will happen, but having no guarantee that it will, or fearing something uh, 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 won't, will not happen, but having no control over whether or not it will or will not. So we have this this struggle with anxiety. Anxiety can lead to catastrophic thinking, uh, overestimating the likelihood of danger or a negative outcome. And so these are all the things that are quickly running through our mind. And uh, and as we try to get a hold of them, we we need to bring God into our situation. Uh, Let me explain to you what normal fear is. Why? God has given us an emotion of fear. It, uh, if, it, if it could be uh, de- uh, detrimental to us, then why would God give it to us? The answer is that when we are in intimate danger, it is the symptoms of fear that protects us from whatever is going to attack us. Um, just a few days ago, in one of my excursions out of the house, uh, I went to AT&T, uh, which was an interesting visit. They, they won't touch your phone. You have to stand back and they tell you what to touch on your phone. And we're trying to figure out my phone. And I had two phones with me because I've had phone trouble. And, you know, I'm going through that whole process. And so we finally, we get my phone fixed. And I'm walking out to my truck and in my peripheral vision, and I asked God, I said, God, give me a Give me an example of when I have last felt those symptoms of fear. So as I'm headed to my truck, uh, my truck was parked face in, and it it was crooked because I always park it crooked. I do that on purpose in case anybody wonders if you've seen me park. And, uh, And then there was an empty spot, and then there was another truck here, and it was perfectly backed in. And as I was walking to my truck, out of the corner of my eye, I saw three young men. And, uh, and I don't know what alerted me, but I thought, hmm. And I walked over to my truck, and I had unlocked my door. And as I did, I saw two of those young people stop at the front of their truck. And, and they just stood there. The third one began to come toward me with a purpose. And I could see him in the glass of my back window of my truck. And so I see this man coming toward me 
like he was about to do something. And, and I had unlocked my door, and so I spun around, and I opened, my, I opened my door, and now he was about 10 feet away from me, and the symptoms of fear were all over me. Man, the adrenaline was pumping. And I, and I turned, and I looked at him, and I said, Why are you walking up on me? And he hesitated for a second. And as he hesitated, I stuck my hand down, you know, that little thing that runs along your door and you can throw junk in, you know? I stuck my hand in there as though I had something important in there. And I said, you don't want to come at me. And, uh, and I'm sure he thought that I had the hold of butt of a gun. What I had the hold of was a lot of QT napkins that I keep in there. But I didn't want him to know that. And it was the symptom of fear that was running through me that gave me this good, solid, angry look to look at him like, what are you going to do next? And he stood there for a minute. He pulled out a cigarette. He lit his cigarette and looked at me, took a puff on it, and turned and got in his truck. And his other two friends ran around. They got in the truck, and they drove away. And I thought, thank you, God, for fear. The kind of fear that tells you that there's an intimate danger that you're in. And you need to react to it and respond to it. It was a great illustration. I went home, changed my pants, and I'm fine after that. Um, see, you can, I, I can't even get discouraging looks from you because you're not here. Some of you would be rolling your eyes. Frazy would be right there rolling her eyes because I just said that. But no, you're not there. And nobody else is there. So, let's look at abnormal fear. When abnormal fear exists, the level of fear is way out of proportion to what the actual situation, in fact, the fear may be totally un unrelated to the situation. Abnormal fear can then result in a panic or a panic attack. When... When you begin to listen when this coronavirus first came out and all anybody could talk about was death and destruction and you thought, if I get it, I'm a dead man. And you, didn't, you knew nothing about it and, and you're overreacting to it and it can create something in you that is unnatural and it's an abnormal fear. You know that happened to the psalmist? Do you know the, uh, I'm so encouraged by, by the Psalms because many times in the Psalms we find the psalmist whining about something that didn't go their way or afraid of something or, or filled with abnormal fear. And so that's what we have in Psalm 55 verses 4 through 7. Listen to the psalmist and, and you'll see this is nearly a panic attack coming off the pages of Scripture. It says, My heart pounds in my chest. The terror of death assaults me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me, and I can't stop shaking. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Then I would fly away and I would rest. I would fly away to the quiet of the wilderness. You see, that's an abnormal fear. That's a guy that was so afraid, his heart was pumping out of his chest. He's so afraid that, it, that he was trembling and, and it was assaulting him. You know, people are living like that right now. They go for days with that kind of tension on their mind and on their heart. And fear and anxiety take years off your life if you don't get them under control. And yet God gave us, God gave us fear as an emotion. But he doesn't want us to be fearful. Fearful is when fear moves into that arena that has no place in God's will and in your life. Let me give you some biblical advice. I just looked up a few verses uh, related to fear. Listen to John 14.1. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Jesus, of course, speaking to his disciples. So he begins a long prayer for them. Psalm 94, 19. When doubts fill my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. Ecclesiastes eleven ten, So refuse to worry and keep your body healthy. See, worry is not adding years to your life. It's taking them away. 
It's stressing you out. The very thing that you're trying to move away from, a disease. You're trying to keep your immune system high, and yet as you worry, as you fear, as you are fi filled with anxiety, you're killing the antibodies that want to kill a virus because your body is, is pushing away the good things that it has to fight things off because of your anxiety and your worry. Psalm 139, 16. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. God has his eye on you. God, more, more perfectly, has his heart set on you. And when we begin to fear, we begin to be full of anxiety. It creates a problem. And it takes away the intimacy that God intended us to have with him. And so we get caught up like everybody else in these common causes of fear. I've written down just, just three common causes of fear. Uh, your loved one from, uh, from, from others feels threatened. And certainly that's a, that's a very common fear right now. Worried about your children, worried about the different people in your life who might get caught in this virus, worrying about those who have uh, an elderly mom or an elderly dad and what the devastation that might mean. And so it's a common fear and it's one we tend to overdo because it, it has so gripped our hearts. Uh, the second one I've written down here is your significance feels threatened. And, you know, with all the things we're being asked to do, stay home, don't go here, just place yourself there, and, and virtually having to walk away from the things that feed you on a daily basis, your job, uh, you know, just your friends, the people that you meet and greet, the things that you do during the day, the way that your self-esteem is kept up. Uh, it's, it's just gone because you feel like your significance is being threatened by something that you can't control. It's not even someone, it's something which makes it even harder. And then the last one is your security feels threatened and certainly this has threatened the security of, of not just individuals but of major companies. It's, a, it's interfered with so many different things within our society, within our culture and and, and we now, those of us who pay absolutely no attention to where the Dow finishes and, and, and pay little attention to it and have paid less attention to it because it has risen so well over this past three years, now it's just kind of all the way down to the bottom and death and destruction is all anybody talks about. And uh, of course the experts say, hang in for the long run. Like I got a choice. <laughs> so you wait and you see and yet you become anxious. Uh, so there's, there's a solution in God's word. In Psalm 56, 11, it says, I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? I would add, what can mere mortals, what can mere infections, what can, what can mere diseases do to me? I trust in God, so I'm not afraid. It's all about the trust factor. Uh, whether you recognize it or not, this hasn't caught God by surprise. So let's talk about managing the root cause of, uh, of being controlled by fear. Now, the root cause is wrong belief. I have no control over fear. My only recourse is to avoid all fearful situations. Can I tell you that's impossible? You can't, you can't live a life that, li that is lived outside of fearful situations. You're going to run into them. They're going to run into you. They're going to find you if you don't find them. So a, a right belief is as I face my fear in, strength, in the strength of the Lord, fear will not control me. Christ lives in me, and as I focus on his perfect love and his perfect truth, I will feel his perfect peace in the midst of every, uh, every fear-producing 
situation. So that's the right way to think about fear. Let me read that again because it's great. As I face my fear in the strength of the Lord, fear will not control me. Christ lives in me. And as I focus on his perfect love and his perfect truth, I will feel his perfect peace in the midst of every fear-producing situation. 1 John 4.18 says it this way, Such love has no fear. Because perfect love expels, expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. God is not the God of punishment. He's the God of grace. He's the God of mercy. He's the God that loves you. He's the God that says, with an everlasting love have I loved you. God loves you without turning away. He loves you without turning back. He loves you regardless of your achievements or your failures. God simply loves you. And the old disciple John is writing it down for us. Such love has no fear. When you start recognizing how much God loves you, you don't need control over anything. You need to be controlled by the love of God. And fear will vanish. So moving from fear to faith. Um, begin with a healthy fear. An awe of God. Proverbs says it this way. In Proverbs 1.7, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. See, we are to fear God. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad fear. It's the awe that we have because God is who God says he is. And when we have this awesome awe of who God is, then we have a desire to obey what God says. And, and uh, I, I love how Proverbs is so straightforward with it. The fear of the Lord is the foundation for true knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. When you fear God, it simply means when you understand God is who he says that he is, and God is God, and you're not, that will crucify fear. And you'll begin to understand that God has your heart. Second thing, be aware that living in a state of fear is not a part of God's plan for you. It's just not. Never has been. You know, so many people are always saying, I, I, I really want to know God's will. I wished I knew God's will. I don't know how to find God's will. Well, dig into the Word of God. And one of the things you'll find is the one thing that God doesn't have for you is fear. So we know that His will is not that you live a fearful life. Not that you run around in a state of fear. A state of chaos mentally and emotionally. Because you're so worried about what may happen, what what could happen, what's going to happen. And the truth is, God knows, and God will care for it. And whatever it is, God will give you the grace to go through it. Psalm 56, 4, I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? See, what, a, what is it we fear? Um, I, I love Corey Ten Boom's little poem when she says, so just think of closing your eyes and, and opening them up and found that you are stepping on shore, of finding yourself in heaven. And she would say between each stanza, afraid of dying? No. Not afraid of that. Of stepping on shore and finding it heaven? No. No fear of that. Of breathing new air and finding it celestial? No. No fear. Of touching a hand and finding that it's God's hand? No fear. Of opening your eyes and realizing you are finally home? No fear. The third thing. 
to move from fear to faith. Be willing to analyze your fear honestly, to discover the real source of your fear. Uh, it's, an, it's an inward look. In Proverbs 29, 25, it says, Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. You take a good look at the fear that you're having in your life and in your heart, and you'll realize none of it is from God. Not any of it. It's all man-made, man-produced. It's us losing our focus on the fact that God loves us and God means to bring safety toward, toward us. Three more things on moving from fear to faith. Beware, be aware of the power of God's love for you. In Jeremiah 31.3, he says, Long ago the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. There is a sense in which God has the greatest power in all the world and in all of eternity, and that is the power of his love. And God is drawing us to himself. So what is it we should fear? Knowing that God is doing that, and doing that every day, every hour, every minute. The fifth thing to move from fear to faith is be involved with other believers. In Philippians 4.10, uh, Paul would say, How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have, have the chance to help me. The idea is, that we need each other. And really, one of the most difficult parts of, of where we are in terms of the reality of how we must maintain a distance from each other and how we must stay apart from each other, we can't allow that to keep us from each other. So as we're going through this time, no matter how long it lasts, because it could end and begin again with something else, but while we're in it, the idea is Keep contact with one another. Keep, keep yourself involved with other Christians. Make sure that you're seeing other people. Make sure that you're caring for other people. It can all be done either on the phone or, or you can do it at a six-foot distance, but don't pull yourself away and bury yourself in your home and just sit there in fear. It's not what God intends. God intends for God's people to begin to show the character of Christ. As we bear one another's burdens, we, we fulfill the law of Christ. We love our neighbor. We love one another. It's a great time to, to love a neighbor. This is a great time, and, and, and we haven't done it. But now, we almost have to do it, to stand and, and talk to your neighbor across your fence. And begin to know that person, begin to talk to them about their fear and become their comfort, become that agent of God in their life and begin to share with them what God longs to do in their hearts. And then finally, begin using the truth of God's word. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and our strength, always a ready help in times of trouble. There are so many scriptures related to fear and our response to fear, to anxiety and our response to anxiety, and the God who is great, the God who is wonderful, who is there. And in his word, we can find comfort during this time. This is a very troubling time, and yet a time with great opportunity. This is a time for the church to be the church. This is a time for the church to show the character of Christ. It's a time for us to be gentle and kind, patient with people, to be of service to people, to help people. And we want to do that for you. If there's something going on in your heart and it has got you so gripped in fear, call somebody. Talk with them. Speak of your fear. Get it out. Deal with it. Square up to it. 
Don't let it make a coward of you, because it will. If we allow fear to hit our hearts to the degree that it is hitting many hearts in America, the disease will win even if we don't catch it. We will have caught another disease, a disease of our soul that, that has exchanged fear instead of faith. Choose faith instead of fear. Begin to trust the Lord God with this situation directly confronting the fear in your life that you might find the peace of God that passes all understanding. Father, help us. Help us as we go through what are fearful times. No question about it. But Father, help us to go through it with an energy and an excitement that draws people to you. The kind of, uh, the kind of energy that will uh, even force people to walk up and say, how can you live through this time with such peace in your heart? Because people want to know. People are hurting. People are fearful. And we have nothing to fear. In the great words of Winston Churchill, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Such true words. And with you, Father, we have nothing to fear because you have conquered fear in our hearts. Father, may we live in that truth that we might be free. In Jesus' name, amen. I need the every hour most gracious Lord no tender voice like thine can peace afford I need thee oh I need thee every hour I need thee oh bless me now my Savior I come I need thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me thine indeed, thou blessed Son. I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. Savior, I come to Thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Thee. God bless you. Have a great week.